Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about C++, specifically C++ 26, also known as ISO 14882-2026, much less sexy name. The reason why we're talking about it is, earlier this month, they finalized the draft. So you can think of this as like a feature freeze beta of the language standard. We've got some pretty major new features coming to the world of C++. It's possible that C++ 26 is going to be the biggest release of C++ since maybe 03? Uh, it's hard to say, maybe maybe 17, but this is a pretty substantial release. And one of the biggest new reasons for that is this, the addition of compile time reflection. Now this is coming from the blog of Herb Sutter. He has been on the C++ board for a very, very long time. Um, and again, they've just voted in a couple of new features to C++ 26 standard. Now this is, again, just the language implementation. They're still going to have to go ahead and all the compilers are going to have to add these features. And we're going to take a look in a second at exactly uh, how long that might take. But the big thing with this new feature is going to be compile time um, reflection is going to give them the ability to do things. Um, so right here, we've got a bit of a description of what uh, it's going to be all about. So I'm positive for many years to come, we'll be looking back at today, the day reflection first was adopted for standard C++ as a pivotal date in the language's history. Reflection will fundamentally improve the way we write C++ code, expand the expressiveness of the language more than we've seen in at least 20 years, and lead to major simplifications in real-world C++ tool chains and environments. Even with the first partial reflection capabilities we have today, we will already be able to reflect on C++ types and use that information plus plain old uh, standard out uh, to generate arbitrary additional C++ source code that is based on that information that we can compile and link to in the same program as it's being built. In the future, we'll also get token injections to generate C++ source right within the same source file. We can generate anything. Arbitrary binary metadata such as uh, WINMD files, arbitrary code in other languages such as Python or JavaScript bindings automatically generated to wrap C++ types, all in a portable uh, standard C++. So reflection is something that Java's got, C Sharp have got. They've actually got something called runtime as well as compile time reflection. Now, what we're getting here in the world of C++ is compile time only. So that means the compiler is generating this, but it's going to have a bunch more metadata to work with to know what kind of types it's got. On top of that, we've got a couple of other implementations here in this as well. One of the big new additions to C++26 is contracts, and the other one is standard execution, which is also known as sender receivers. It's a way of breaking up code into a synchronous manner. So we're going to see an example of each one of these right now. So this one comes from uh, InfoQ. They've got about the basically C++26 draft being finalized. And they've got an example of static reflection. So you can see it right here. You can also see how this could be so abused, like massively abused. But it's going to open up the world of C++ to a whole bunch more algorithms. So you can see here, what they've done is they've implemented the ability to turn an enum type into a string type. So you see, they've created this function called enum to string using this new mechanisms in place, this new uh, compile time reflection. Part of that is being implemented using this hat operator over here, which funny enough, Microsoft once co-opted for their whole managed pointer thing. That, let's not talk about that. So anyways, you can see an example of how it's working here. Basically, it's taking this uh, constant expression uh, here from standard meta member of and then here is, again, the new magic. And what you're doing, basically, more or less, is at compile time, turning an enumeration. So each of the values in this enum, so you've got, again, it's got the values of red, green, and blue. It's turning them into strings and returning it back. This is something that would be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to do before. And this is sort of a contrived example. But where you could see this, especially in the world of game development, is if you were exposing um, say Lua bindings or Python bindings, etc. this would make that task a whole lot easier. So compile time reflection, or also known as static reflection, a big deal, something that C++ has been missing for a very long time. Um, there is a little bit of dynamic reflection in the form of RTII, but the kind of a different thing, or RTTI, sorry. Um, so this is being added, huge deal. This is going to change the way a lot of libraries are constructed. A lot of traditional meta programming is going to be doing very differently after C++26 because of this new functionality. On top of that, we also have this. This is a new asynchronous method. It's implemented via uh, standard execution. And the entire idea is between two classes here. Uh, you've got senders and receivers. And basically the idea behind these two is you can split up work. 
So uh, the uh, sender will have units of asynchronous work and receivers are where the results of that work are going to go. It's kind of like coroutines. So for coroutines to splice a bit of time up into itself, this turns it into kind of branches. It's going to give you a lot more control over forked execution. So if you want to have a bunch of tasks that run asynchronously, your idea basically is you'll create these senders that create the task that's going to be run. And then you've got the receivers that ultimately receive the results from the sender. So it's a new way of making your code asynchronous or for parallelizing your code execution. Again, it's going to result in quite a few uh, different uh, implementations of the way things are done now. But asynchronous code is something, especially in the world of multiprocessors and multi GPUs and everything that we're dealing with right now, this is getting more and more common. So the standard execution is going to be probably a pretty big deal. And then the other one we've got going on is contracts. Now contracts, as far as I understand, is basically you can give a pre and a post condition on a function. Uh, so you can see here, uh, this divide function, it will now have the precondition where the denominator cannot be zero. The post condition where it's got to be greater than zero. Uh, so the numerator needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And the denominator needs to be greater than zero on the output. And then you've got this contract assert to make sure that the contract actually happened. So programming out a contract is a very common thing. Basically, it's a way of saying, here's what comes in, here's what comes out. Did it work out that way? So it's a, a way of, in the language, basically defining these contracts for how it should run, should ultimately make for um, I guess more determinate or more stable code as a result. So a pretty big feature there. So I think reflection contracts and the new sender receiver asynchronous are the biggest new features inside of C++26 and they literally just got added into the final draft. So this is the spec for C++26. There should be no new features, nothing being added beyond that. Now the one thing you got to keep in mind is it's going to be a while. So this here is C++ references breakdown of implementation of um, features. And one thing you're going to notice, this is the C++26 feature set and who implement them. So right now, GCC and Clang are actually implementing a decent number of the features. So you can see here all the various different things that have been voted in the past. So only a handful of things are missing from GCC, for example, maybe two thirds. Now, the thing you got to keep in mind, all of the new things that we just talked about, uh, so like the new reflection system, etc., cetera, uh, they're not here yet. So they're not represented in this table. And you're looking at other compilers, Visual C, yeah, that's a big fat nothing. Now, the thing you got to know about C++, um, C++ 23 feature standard still isn't fully implemented by any compiler, like right there. So C++ 23 is not ubiquitous yet. And we go down here to C++ 20, and you're going to notice we still got partials missing and so on. So because they have hit the final draft of C++ 26, doesn't mean that we're going to see it anytime soon. But this is a big deal, the new features that they've added. It's just going to probably be a few years before we got, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, GCC probably has a reference implementation of this within a few months, which is very impressive, but I don't know about using this in the wild as of yet. You can see over here though, he's thinking that it's going to be pretty quick. So, um, so don't think C++ 26 sounds very far away because it sure isn't. C++ 26 feature freeze is passed. So that is what they just finished. And even before that, compilers have already been aggressively implementing C++ 26 with GCC and Clang already implementing about two thirds of C++ 26 language features adopted so far. So adopted so far, they just adopted more stuff. So that means that uh, now they, uh, both Clang and GCC have a lot of work to do. And then Visual Studio hasn't even started yet. So Visual C++, it's got a bit more work to do than even those two. So it's going to be available soonish, uh, but some interesting stuff here. I'm curious what you ultimately think of these new features. Again, the things that they voted in is the static reflection, uh, which is something that has definitely been missing from the language uh, up to this point. Uh, and then on top of that, contracts and the asynchronous sender receiver system. I think all three of those are going to be transformative for how the language is used. And there have been people out there that posited that C++26 is going to be the last major update. I don't buy that, but this is some seriously missing functionality that it's going to be a milestone release, I think. So what do you think of C++26? Are you excited about these new features? Have you moved beyond C++? I know we're going to have a lot of like the, just use Rust, just use C Sharp, whatever people down below. But for a lot of people, that's not the option. And truth of the matter is, is most of your big stuff, your, especially in the world of game development, a lot of custom game engines, all custom game engines for the most part, they're written in C++ at this point. Unity, um, 
Godot, uh, Unreal Engine, you name it. At the core, it's still C++. So C++ is not going away anytime soon. And what do you think of these additions of C++26? Because the thing is, they got to be good enough for people to go ahead and adopt them. Otherwise, like people mostly just skip over a language version. But I think these are a pretty significant deal. What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.